يا ذا الأسماء الحسنى يا خالقنا غفرانا نسألك وأنت الأسماء نأمل عفوك سبحانك بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Continuing from the Asma Allah al Husna, we are on the names of Al Ali, Al Kabir, Al Hafiz, Al Muqit. So Al Latif al Khabir al Halim al Azim al Al Ghafur al Shakur al Ali al Kabir. Now Al Ali is Allah Azza wa Jalla's name. That, deny, that, that denotes that Allah Azza wa Jal is, is very, very great. And He is most high and He is above His affairs. We have covered the names just before this, how Allah Azza wa Jal, He is Latif, He is Khabir, He is Halim, Azim, Shakur, Ghafur, all these names. They show different aspects of Allah Azza wa Jal. And every single one name that we'll cover, it will show Allah Azza wa Jal in a different way for us to understand him. Now though there are similar names to this, Al-Muta'ali, and there's also other names to, to show Al-A'la for example, Allah is the, the highest. But Al-Ali in itself shows that he's most high. And Al-Ali has been used for Allah Azza wa Jal in a way that in parts of the Qur'an you will find Al-Ali Al-Azim has come and Al-Ali Al-Kabir has come which means Allah is most high, Allah is most great uh, Allah is most great in, in different ways now this name Al-Ali and also Al-Kabir next to it has appeared in Surah Saba Surah number 34, Ayah number 23 Allah Azza wa Jal has said عالم الغيب وشهادة الكبير المتعال متعال is another name متعالي which means Allah Azza wa Jal He knows the seen He knows the unseen He is the kabir He is the great He is متعال He is the one who is most high now this name in itself Al-Ali it shows that anything attributed to Allah is high for example first thing is His Arsh His Arsh is high above everything else Another meaning of this is that Allah Azza wa Jal, He Himself in His qualities is high. And He is noble in His qualities. The meaning of Ali gives not only highness, but it gives nobleness. And Allah Azza wa Jal, when it comes to the hukum, when it comes to His command, His command is the highest and He is the highest authority. These are two of the, or three of the meanings that are attributed to Al Ali. The other meaning that is attributed to Ali is of, dom of d dominion and, and dominating whatever is under Allah Azza wa meaning that everything else. So Allah has said in Surah Mu'minun, this is 23rd Surah, Ayah number 19, He has said, وَلَا عَلَىٰ بَعْضُهُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْضُ This means that if Allah gave the chance to any other creature to become a god, if Allah gave that chance to anything else, then they would have had this quality in them to always dominate and always take over things. So what that would mean is that if any of the other gods besides Allah were true, and if they really were gods, then each god would try and take over another god. Each god would try and take over another piece and try to dominate. And since there is no one that has dominion and no one that can dominate except Allah Azza wa Jal. This makes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most dominant and this makes Allah Azza wa Jal Al-Ali. Meaning that there is nothing else that can come overcome Allah and nothing else that can dominate Allah. If there was more than one God, then they would have fought one another. They would have tried to take pieces of the creation for themselves. They would have tried to take one part of the creation that belongs to another God for this, this God. So Allah says, there would have been With this type of struggling between one God trying to possess power over another one, the whole of the creation would have been in turmoil. But since you do not see them in turmoil, 
That's, that's the evidence that we have that Allah Azza wa is one and there is no other God besides Allah and He is the sole God. When Fir'aun, he dominated the earth, Allah Azza wa said in Surah An-Kabut, ayah number four, He said, Inna Fir'aun ala fil ard. Inna Fir'aun ala fil ard. Surah, surah Al-Qasas in the 28th uh, Surah of the Quran. Allah, uh, has, Allah Azza wa says, Inna Fir'aun, Fir'aun, he dominated the earth. Now the word Allah has been used here, which means that Ali, the word Ali of Allah, his name, has this meaning of dominance inside it. What this also shows is that he is free from any of the, any of the things that come over his creation. He's above that. Al-Alim is above. So how is he above? He's above in the sense that anything that he has created which has a shortcoming, or has a deficiency, Allah Azza wa is above that. Allah Azza wa has said in Surah Al-Mujadala, Ayah number 11, يَرْفَعِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ دَرَجَاتِ Those of you who have believed, and those of you who have been given knowledge, Allah Azza wa will lift for them their darajat, and He will lift for them their status. Now what this shows is that, all the believers and all the, all the ulama and all those who Allah has given some kind of makan or some kind of status to وَفَوْقَ كُلِّ ذِي عِلْمٍ عَلِيمٍ Above everyone who knows something is Allah, is, is another person who knows. And above everyone who knows something greater is Allah Azza wa So above anyone who has status is another person who has status. And above that person who has status is another one that has a greater status. And above everyone who has a great status is Allah Azza wa Jal. So when we refer to Al Ali, it means he is the highest of all the status that you can you can think of. And what how it reflects on us is that if we are the people of good action and we are the people of of iman and good faith and good action then we look forward to be taken to Illiyin after our deaths. There is Sijin and there is Illiyin. Illiyin is the maqam, is the place for all those people who have got Ulu. Ulu means Allah is now giving them some kind of status. He's giving them some kind of height. Illiyin itself has that Ayn Lam Ya inside it that Ali has. Which means that the Ali, Allah Azza wa Jal, being so high is going to now lift the status of those people who have done good on this earth and he is now going to give them a status inside Illiyin. This is all to do with the name Al-Ali. So the next name after Al-Ali is Al-Kabir. In the Asma'ullah Al-Husna is Al-Kabir. And Al-Kabir is one who, to whom, to whom all matters and delegations are related to فَالْحُكْمُ لِلَّهِ الْعَلِيِّ الْكَبِيرِ This is in Surah Al-Ghafir, Ayah number 12. That every command that, that happens, all of it relates back to Allah Azza wa He will deal with all of this in the end. فَالْحُكْمُ لِلَّهِ الْعَلِيِّ الْكَبِيرِ And that His governance and His, his uh, final say will be the one that will overcome everything else. Now here two names have been used, Al-Ali and Kabir again, both of these have been used, meaning that because he is so high, because he's so great, Kabir means great, all matters will relate to him. <clears throat> and he'll be the one who will finally govern all affairs and whatever he says in the Day of Judgment will be the greatest. Now, Kabir also appears very similar to Mutakabbir, Allah's name Al-Mutakabbir, which we have covered in the past. Now, Al-Mutakabbir, meaning that the one who has the right to show that he is the great one. And Al-Kabir means he is the great one. Here, Allah Azza wa Jal, he has not allowed us to show our greatness in front of him. Allah Azza wa Jal has said in Surah Ghafir, ayah number 56, In fi sudurihim illa kiburum ma hum, ma hum bibaligi. If a human being has kibr, or they have arrogance inside them, or they have this kind of greatness inside them, that I am someone who's great, then Allah Azza wa Jal, He says that this is something which they will never be able to reach. This greatness that they think they are, this great person they are, they will never be able to reach. Now, what is really important here is, 
that the human being thinks that anything that I've got, where has that come from? This is, this is one of the things that is important for us to start thinking about. Where has this, for example, I am someone who, I, I'm thinking that I've got this, for example, I've got intelligence. Where has intelligence come from? If I start feeling well, I am someone and I've got you know, wealth, where has the wealth come from? If a human being was to think of every single thing that we have, we possess, then there is nothing that we possess except that it comes from Allah. And if we are to think like that, then in the end what will happen is that we will only see Allah as Kabir. We will only see Allah as Ali. We will only see Allah as the greatest one. We will only see Allah as the one who deserves all, all praise. If somebody says to me next time that, you know, you, you are someone, you know, MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah, you know, you've done this, you should be praised for this and we praise it. If somebody says that, the true believer only sees Allah, the one who has provided him with the means of all of this. He is the one that should be praised for this. He is the one that deserves the greatness. He is the one that is great because he gave me all of this. If I have beauty, Allah gave me that beauty. If I have money, Allah gave me that money. If I have, you know, anything you, you could talk about. If I, if I have a status in this world, it is only Allah Azza wa Jal that has given me the status. So therefore, Allah deserves the praise and he deserves to be looked at as Al-Kabir and Al-Ali, the one who is great. Now, one of the things, him being Kabir, we also use the word Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allah is the greatest. Whenever we say Allahu Akbar, or the Mu'addin will say Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, whenever he will say that, the word Akbar shows that he is greater. Allah is, see, Allahu Akbar doesn't necessarily mean Allah is the greatest. It actually means Allah is greater. Now then you question, what is Allah greater than? Allah is greater than all his creation or whatever he's created. Or Allah is greater than anything besides him. That's where, that's where you can give a good meaning to Allahu Akbar. Now in the Quran, in Surah Ghafir, ayah number 57, Allah Azza wa Jalla has said, لَخَلْقُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ أَكْبَرُ مِنْ خَلْقِ النَّاسِ The creation of the heavens and the earth, they are much greater than the creation of people themselves. So if a person wants to think about the greatness of Allah, they can think about the greatness of Allah through his creation to see how great he is. And even then, it will only be a small manifestation of the greatness of Allah Azza wa Jal. When, I, when we start salah, when we are in the praise of Allah, we should think, Allahu Akbar, Allah is greater than all my worries. Allah is greater than all my problems. Allah is greater than all the things that I face that are difficult for me. Allah is greater than... My, my time that I need to give to others, Allah is greater than that. So that is, that is why the beginning of, of, the, uh, of the Salah starts with Allahu Akbar. And there's a lot of deep meaning in us using the word Allahu Akbar. I mean Allah is the one who is greater. And He always has to be greater than something else. Now, when we have acknowledged that Allah is the highest and Allah is the greatest, the next... The next name that comes is Al-Hafiz. Al-Hafiz. Now Al-Hafiz is saying that Allah is the one who protects. He protects those things from things that they might find calamity. Things that will perish. Allah protects them from, being, from perishing. Now Him protecting things, there are many things Allah protects. For example, Allah has said, وَلَا يَؤُدُهُ حِفْظُهُمَا in, in, in Ayatul Kursi. That the, the protection of the whole of the heavens and the earth, this is not burdensome on, on Allah. Allah protects that and it does not burden Allah by the least. This is in Surah Baqarah, ayah number 255. Allah Azza wa has said in Surah As-Safat, ayah number 7, وَحِفْظًا مِّن كُلِّ شَيْطَانٍ مَارِدٍ Allah provides a protection from every single devil or every shaitan. He protects the, the heaven itself. So when the, when the shayateen try to go up there, try to get some information from the highest in a part of our existence in this world, they try to go to the universe and try to get some information, Allah protects from, from that. Now these are two forms of protection, but He has said in the Holy Quran in Surah Al-Ra'd, ayah number 11, He has said, 
لَهُ مُعَقِّبَاتٌ مِّن بَيْنِ يَدَيْهِ وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِ يَحْفَظُونَهُ مِّنْ أَمْلِ اللَّهِ Allah Azza wa Jal has kept besides everything else He has given us certain angels that will protect us from the many different woes that we come across. So sometimes human beings, he was just about to slip, but then he saved himself. A lot of these slips and accidents where a person is, is, is saved, somehow, you know, their, their body registered to something, to hold on to something before they even fell onto the ground. A lot of this is from the angels that Allah has given us. يَحْفَظُونَهُ مِنْ أَمْدِ اللَّهِ From the command of Allah, these angels will protect us. And every day Allah says for this human being, I have kept for them angels that are protecting them. Protecting them from the woes and the dangers that are around him, around them. There are so many accidents around the world that are supposed to happen. Whether they are accidents, you know, physical accidents, you know, slips or whatever it is. Allah Azza wa Jal saves us from that. And that is one way that we understand Al-Hafiz of Allah being the, protect, being the protector. Now, he, has, he protects human beings. He protects the heavens and the earth, he has said in the Qur'an. He protects the, the, the sky in particular from the shayateen. He protects the Qur'an. Inna wa inna lahu the word, Allah's name, Hafiz, and Allah's name, Hafiz, the one who protects means that Allah is the one that will keep it from any form, any form of discrepancy that will come about in the Qur'an. Now, Allah's Qur'an that He has protected is through what? Through every, every person who will memorize the Qur'an, Allah protects the Qur'an through him or through her. Through every form of a person being able to retrieve the Qur'an and keep it into a form or shape, Allah has protected the Qur'an. Through every person who will read the Qur'an, Allah has protected the Qur'an. Every person who spread the Qur'an, everyone who will do tafsir of the Qur'an, everyone who will do, do tilawah of the Qur'an, Allah protects his Qur'an through that. And Allah Azza wa Jal has protected from what? From the human beings on the earth that will do their best to try and destroy the Qur'an. There are certain human beings who try to destroy the Qur'an. And there are these efforts that have happened again and again to try and um, destroy um, the Qur'an or to, to, to completely try to make a Qur'an that is similar to it but it, it is really different. The, the Qur'an, they have tried, what they've tried to do over time and again is that to try and publish. There are, there are certain Qur'ans and you should be, you know, if somebody points out to you what they are then you would know that there are certain attempts to make Qur'ans and they're written to propagate Christianity and it will actually be propagating Christianity but you won't even know what it is and they try this but subhanallah and azim Allah Azza wa he has protected his Quran because those things never flourish the one that flourishes is the Holy Quran and what Allah has given if you think about it Allah has given us the deen where he has made us Read the Quran, subhanAllah, every single day we are reciting the Quran, we are reading the Quran. Whereas the other religions, they will only come to, the, to their book only a few times. The only, other religions, they will only visit their book a few times, if that. Once a week, they might even come to it once a year, once in a lifetime, they might visit their book. Whereas the Muslims take it on themselves that even if they don't know, even if they don't know anything else, even if they don't know the meaning of the Qur'an, they will still recite the Qur'an. This is a miracle of Allah Azza wa Jal. How many, you know, how many Bibles have been written in the past in Aramaic or in Greek, you know, the Greek language? But because the person doesn't know the Greek language, the person will not recite. Because they don't know the Greek language, they won't recite the Bible in you know, Greek. There are certain manuscripts that still exist in Greek. But the Christians won't actually read those because they don't understand them. They don't even know how, how to pronounce them. Allah has protected the Qur'an in such a way that every harf, every letter of the Qur'an, how to pronounce it, Allah has even protected that. So for example, you know, which, which language do you actually know where you, you go to language? For example, um, the English language, right? The English language. Let's say, for example, um, 
D, the letter D. Have you ever, has anyone ever come across the English language and then the way you actually approach the English language is that D is where the tip of your tongue touches uh, a part of your palate and that part that it touches is exactly this part of the palate not in the middle, not towards the teeth, but in between somewhere. That's where D, D comes from. I mean, no one, no one really learns, learns the English language or any other language like that. You just say D and you just pronounce the D. But because Allah Azza wa Jalla wanted to protect this Quran, Alif, Ba, Ta, Sa, Jim, Ha, and so on, each and every letter, when you learn Tajweed, the pronunciation of the letter, where the tongue will be, where it will be placed, where it will be pronounced from, how much fullness of the mouth you have to have, how much emptiness you will have, um, how you spo- whether you're supposed to spread uh, the, the pronunciation of that letter as you're pronouncing it, like for wad, wad, and so on, where exactly will the tongue touch, whether it's the roots of the gums, or whether it's the side of the teeth, or whether it's the bottom of the teeth, and which exact teeth it will touch, and they've named every single teeth. So there's four teeth here at the front that the tongue will touch for these letters, and two teeth here for that, and the molars will be te- you know, touched for this. Subhanallah and even the letters have been preserved by Allah until the Day of Judgment. That's what Allah has done for this, for this uh, Qur'an. So when Allah has said, إِنَّا نَحْنُ نَزَّلْنَا ذِكْرًا وَإِنَّا لَهُ لَحَافِظُونَ that hifadha, that protection that Allah Azza wa has given to it is absolutely, you know, it's, it's phenomenal what kind of protection Allah has given to the Qur'an. Not a single letter or a word or a pronunciation has been lost over 14 different you know, centuries that have gone by and they will not be lost until the Day of Judgment. And the hifadha and the protection of that will be until Allah decides not to protect it anymore. So there will be a time when the, the Hafiz will wake up and he will say, you know, they, they will actually get up and they will find the Qur'an, they will find all the Qur'ans blank. There's one hadith that talks about one of the signs of the last hour. They will find the Qur'ans blank. And the one who had memorized the Qur'an, Allah would have taken the Qur'an from his heart by night. So even he doesn't recall what's inside that book. When Allah will take the Qur'an away from the earth, this is one of the signs of the last hour, Allah will take the Qur'an from the earth in such a way that all the pages will be blank and all the hearts will be blank. And the hadith says that the Hafiz will say that I used to remember something but I've even forgotten what it was. So he won't even know that it was the Qur'an. That has, that's how Allah will take the Qur'an away. But that will be you know, after the Jal, after many of the different signs of the last hour. Allah Azza wa will, will, will do that. Now, that is to do with the Hifadha. Now, there are many things that we can ask Allah Azza wa for this protection. And one of the things they say is that to repeat this name constantly, Ya Hafiz, Ya Hafiz. Ya Hafiz. If, if somebody feels that they need protection, if somebody feels that they are insecure, they should repeat the, the name Ya Hafiz, Ya Hafiz, Ya Hafiz. And Bi'idhnillah, through the power of Allah, through the help of Allah, Allah will give them that protection. Allah will give them that, um, that, that guardianship that they are looking for from Allah. So we seek our, in all our affairs of this world, we seek um, protection from all the disasters, all the things that are around us. Now, we don't know how many evils that are lying there. So we put our trust into Allah that he will do the hifadha and he will help us and he will save us from the calamities. Now this is the name Hafiz. So we've done Al-Ali, Al-Kabir, Al-Hafiz and the next one is Al-Muqit. Al-Muqit and this is the last name we will do today. Now Muqit, Muqit is the one that provides the power to everything. Al-Muqit, Muqit comes from Qut. Qut means power. Qut means sustenance. Qut, qut means something that gives you the energy. So anything that has energy, anything that has power, anything that has the power to survive, the power to do something, the power to grow, the power to move, 
the power to make a decision, those powers, the provider of those powers, his name is Al Muqit in Arabic. It's in the form of uh, Ifal, which means that he is the one who gives this. This is in Surah Al Nisa, ayah number 85. Wa kaan Allahu ala kulli shay'in muqita. And he is Allah who is what? To, over everything and for everything, he has provided the power behind it. Now, <clears throat> In providing the power, Allah Azza wa Jal has left nothing. Has left nothing, absolutely nothing. And it's for us to do the fikr. Now, if you want to, if you want to find the belief of us and the tawheed and the oneness of God and the beliefs in His names, if we want this to increase, then the only way is for a person to start to go over the things that Allah has given me power of. This is, this is um, in the Quran Allah has said, إِنَّ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ لَآيَاتِ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنَّةً Those people who remember Allah, they remember Allah standing, they remember Allah sitting, they remember Allah lying down. And Allah then says after dhikr, He says, يَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ They also think about the creation of the heavens and the earth. So one is dhikr and the other one is fikr. Dhikr is when I'm remembering Allah Azza wa Jalla and I'm saying how great Allah is, I'm saying how you know, high Allah is and so on. This is dhikr. And the other one which is fikr, which is thought and reflection. Every believer is encouraged by Allah to do, to do both of these. To do dhikr, not, not only remember Allah, but also do fikr. One is to do with the heart and the other one is to do with the mind. So one is the dhikr which I do with my heart and with my, well, of course it's with my mind, my heart and so on, my inner, inner um, state. But the other thing is fikr, specifically with the brain, with my, with my mind, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start thinking about matters. Now, muqeet, the, the name of Allah's, Allah Azza wa Jal, muqeet, for us to understand that name and for us to be, for, for us to be in the belief of that name is to sit down and to start thinking and going through what Allah Azza wa Jal has given me power of. Sim, you know, things that are daily that we're doing. The power for my digestive system to digest the food comes from muqeet. Comes from Allah Azza wa Jal being muqeet. The power for me to actually eat. The power for me to actually eat. Okay, Razak was the one who provided me the food. Allah being Razak provided me the food. But if I have the food and I can't eat the food, then that means Allah the Muqeet, He hasn't provided me the power to eat. So for me to sit there and to think how Allah Azza wa Jalla has given me the power to eat, to, to move the muscles of my body, to take that food and morsel into my mouth. And then the power in my jaw, the power in my teeth, the power in my mouth, the power in my tongue, the power in my neck, in my food pipe and so on, to take that down. All of it has been provided by Allah Azza wa Jal. So this requires a person to start sitting down thinking. The ulama of the past, many of them have said, for example, وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنَمَا كُنْتُمْ Allah is with you wherever you are. Now to actually think about the powers of Allah being with us, the, the ilm and the knowledge of Allah, the sight of Allah, the hearing of Allah. And here muqeet, the, prov the provision of the powers of Allah Azza wa Jal being with me all the time. For me to think about that, this is where my iman will increase with Allah. My iman with Allah Azza wa Jal will increase. Now for my iman to become kamil and for it to become, for, for it to become um, complete, I have to remember that Allah Azza wa Jal has, has power over oh, Qadir. See, Qadir means He's got the power over everything, fine. But Muqeet means that He's given those creation, those parts of the creation, the power to do whatever, they, you know, whatever Allah has willed. And we've got limits to our power. That's another way of understanding Allah Azza wa Jal. To understand how limited we are with our powers. To look at how limited I am with my powers, that's another way of understanding Allah. That's why Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu said that Araftu Rabbi bi Faslil Awazim. I recognize Allah when He when He started to limit, when He limited 
my determinations. When he limited the things that I was, was determined to do, Allah intervened and he didn't allow me to do it. I recognized Allah through that. That is another way of recognizing the power of Mukit, the power, who, the power of the one who provides the means to have the energy to do anything and has the power also to cut you off from your energy of doing anything. So sometimes, for example, a person has you know, something very simple. If they want to do it, they can do it very simply. But what happens is that they, they, decide, they decide to do it, but they're not able to do it. They decide to do it, but they're not able to do it. They find that something simple that would have taken for two minutes or two hours to do, two weeks go by and they're not able to do it. That is for a person to turn to Allah and to constantly recite لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله Because the power to divert anyone from anything evil and the power to give you the, the, the energy to do something good only lies with Allah Azza wa Jal. And that's where we, our faith lies in Allah. And that's why again constantly we should as believers whenever you can لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله There is no there is, لا حول means there is no one there's nothing to divert me and ولا قوة there's nothing to give me the power إلا بالله except Allah Azza wa Jal. And he is the only one that will give you the power to do it. Either you say إلا بالله or you say إلا بالله العلي العظيم And to recognize that power in Allah Azza wa Jal. So with that we have come to the um, name of Allah Azza wa Jal Muqeet and inshallah uh, from in the next week we'll do maybe another four or five names of the Asma'ullah al-Husna Jazakumullah khair wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen ذكر علم ونور الحاملات سنة ونور والرسمات هنا سرور يحلوات الكاسنين